And we're back, folks, for another edition of Behind the Uniform and pleased to be joined by one of the Ohio natives on this football roster. And one of the guys, when you look back at his class, the faith that they showed in Michigan to still come through, despite what was a very, very down season, right? That 2020 year, these, uh, these guys in the class of 2021 decided to ride it out. Rod Moore was one of them. He joins us now behind the uniform. Rod, welcome. How you doing, man? Good. How are you? Appreciate you for having me. Yeah, man. Glad that you could join us and uh, been very excited about going through the journey with you, especially as an Ohio guy. It's different. You're, so you're the first Ohio guy that we've talked to in this series. So to get your perspective is going to be really, really fun. But let's, let's start there. Let's start as a guy growing up in Ohio. You know, I always ask players who, you know, football or basketball growing up in the state, were you a Buckeye growing up? What was that like? I would say um, probably about up until um, the end of my elementary years, I was a Ohio State fan. Me, all of my parents, me and my parents, all of my family, cousins, we all Ohio State fans. And I started like in Georgia, but um, Georgia was my dream school. And then when you get to high school and all the offers and everything come in and comes in and Michigan comes without an Ohio State offer and it, it kind of just, you know, flip, flipped me. Mm -hmm. And it flipped me, my mom, my dad, but <laughs> <laughs> my, my cousins and everybody else, they still like Ohio State, but when we play them, they root for me, but it's, it's whatever. I still, I'm still a Michigan Wolverine. So when you go back though, before recruiting really picks up, there has to be a point in your high school career where you're like, are you looking around like, man, I, I'm a, a national recruit. Do you remember mm -hmm. when you kind of realized that you were one of the best? Um, I knew I was good because my sophomore year, I was the only sophomore out of anybody on the team to play, like start varsity. Mm -hmm. And then after that year, I had went on the camp tour, like go to camps throughout that summer going into my junior year. And um, as soon as um, I believe it was the first camp we went to, which was Ohio, I got an offer, like right after the camp, got an offer. And I was like, hold on, this is the Division One offer. Like this mm -hmm. is this is what I've always dreamed of. And of course it's Mac, but like it's still Division One. And I'm like, okay, let's see where this can go. And I believe after the camp tour, it ended in um, July. And I had about four offers going into my junior year. And I played my junior year and like I was just so confident on the field. I was just making plays all over. And then mm -hmm. um, after my junior year, I believe when that, you know, when um, I think that day period ends when all the juniors can mm -hmm. have contact, that's when just my phone just started pinging. I'm like, oh, I was like, it's here. Like <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I could be really a division one athlete at the top level. And um, as soon as I got my, um, I think it was Wisconsin offer, that's when it just went like, the next day, I remember I got four offers in one day. It was Michigan, Michigan State, Kentucky, and Notre Dame all in one day. And I was like, that's when I knew, like, okay, yeah, I can do this. And it's time, like, to show everyone that I can do this. Yeah, so Michigan, Kentucky at the time was clean, mm -hmm. right? So, and you know, he had produced his share of DBs. Michigan State, they had built themselves up. A, you know, they'd been a pretty reputable program by that point, obviously, in the 2000s. <clears throat> Notre Dame. I didn't hear Ohio State, right? <laughs> right. And so, how did that hit you at the time? I mean, did you, did wh wh what were they saying? Were you, were they saying they're looking at you? And did you, did it start to be a thing for you not having that offer? So, um, I think it was uh, towards like the middle of my, my senior year. And I still had, I think I had already committed to Michigan. Yeah, I did. And um, they started to come around and it was just like, it wasn't real genuine. Like they would come to the school, but it wouldn't even be like a, a notable coach, if you mm -hmm. get what I'm saying. It would just be like one of their coaches that they send off recruiting. And and I remember just he kept coming to the school and watching me work out. And like, I'm just like, I'm waiting on the offer because like my dream school was Georgia, like I said before. And like, I didn't, I don't think I would ever went, went to Ohio State because I didn't want to stay in state or stay close mm -hmm. to home for school. But like, I know that offer would have, opened up yeah. you know, like a lot of other doors. So I'm yeah. like, okay, I want this offer for that. Like <laughs> right. I have to go there. And it is, they just kept telling me, 
come to the camp in the summer and, and we want to see. It. I was like, nah, like. Either you're going to offer me off of the film you see, and I'm not coming to a camp for an offer. I didn't really have to do that. Like, right. So it was like, that's not what I was going to do. So yeah. then they just never threw the offer. And then, right. All it, right. So it maybe, that made me mad, though. Like, <laughs> you wanted me to come to a camp like that. That hit me. I was like, OK, nah. So, you know, it's interesting because I know one of your guys, Mike McCray, right? Mm -hmm. And so Mike kind of went through the same thing. Now, they eventually came in on Mike, but it's late, right? And now for him, it was even different because Mike was the son of a captain. Like his dad like was mm -hmm. like a dude at Ohio State. Right. And he didn't hit, he didn't have the offer at first and then but he it comes to Michigan. So what what about I mean, did you talk to him about that experience? I mean, what what kind of words did he have for you? Oh, uh, I didn't really talk to him about the Ohio State experience, but like his dad and my dad, they know each other. Like I know he know he went to Trywood and I grew up in Inglewood, so it's like right there. And there's a store called UDF that's like in the middle of like a corner store that's in the middle of all of it. And it would be like, every so often my dad would come home, I see you might crave that, like, and just telling me how, like, he would ask him how his son went through the process and just giving him pointers on everything and how to handle the situations. And then that's when I started um, getting recruited by Michigan and he started reaching out to me and helping recruit. Cause you know, he had went back on and uh, been a coach, an assistant coach and stuff like that. And it was just, always cool from there because like it was somebody from literally right around the corner from where I grew up mm -hmm. and just to have that relationship with him and then like come to find out one of my best friends his wife is his cousin so like I go in the the house and he's in the house and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> it's like on Thanksgiving doing? or something like, what you doing here <laughs> but then um yeah he just he just always been that that person that helped me you know get through that recruiting process and and once I got to Michigan like even when he went to Notre Dame like he still helped me and even he's at Boston at UMass, I think. I think, I, think he's at UMass. I think that's where Mike is now. Yeah, I think he's at UMass yeah. with uh, Don Brown. But even when he's there, like he still talks to me to this day and it's just he's always just been there, like, to help me through that process. Right. So, you know, his circumstance was was a little bit a little bit different though, because I mean, man, you know, he's a dude when Michigan was was actually doing kind of well in Ohio, mm -hmm. relatively speaking. I mean, there was that period in the early 2000s where they didn't get a guy, and then Brady comes in, and they start opening the doors to Ohio back up. So it wasn't this odd thing for an Ohio guy to go, go to Michigan. By the time you come around, it is, mm -hmm. right? So, But you commit, and then Michigan has that 2020 season, man. So I wanna, want you to take me back to when you guys, I remember you guys all came up <laughs> and kind of did your own visit weekend. <laughs> yeah. And there, I know JJ was one of the main ones saying, I'm, I'm going to stay. What, did you have that in your mind coming up or were you ever having any doubts based on what was going on on the field? Um, then and there, like, nah, I didn't have, like, every team's going to have a bad season. So I didn't really care for the way they were playing. That was going to change my mind. But, like, you know, when the signing day was coming around, that's when everything was like, oh, okay, like, do I stay? Mm -hmm. What do I do? Like. But like that was the only time I had a thought. But just coming here with that with with Junior and um, Christian and JJ and all of them, like I think that just really made our class come together because like to this day our class is like I believe is one of our one of the closest closer classes because you see other classes they have like their groups their groups their groups like everybody in my class knows and messes with each other and like cool with each other. There's no. no but y'all kind of had to be, didn't y'all? I mean, yeah. based on when you're because you like you said. I mean, there was some question about who was going to be the coach, mm -hmm. right? So, I right. mean, it was a whole lot for y'all to go through at that time. So, if y'all were gonna, if y'all were going to come, you kind of had to make sure you was coming with somebody, right? Right, and just based off of that, like me and McBurrows, like we didn't talk. He was there too. McBurrows came too, but he, you know, he was kind of his a little in his own world. But it just, like I said, made our class just real close together, and and I believe like. We go, we're going to have a lot of playmakers on the field come out of that class this year. Mm -hmm. That time, though, going back to that visit, was I think it was the Wisconsin weekend. Was there, was there, were there active conversations like, "Hey, man, let's all stay together," or did that even have to be said? Mm, I don't even think that had to be said. I, mean, I don't think that had to be said. I don't think nobody, because yeah, I don't think we, because we didn't know each other that well, so you don't want to. You know, it's often hard to have perspective in the moment. Do y'all talk about in retrospect? how big that was because it would have been very easy for that class to fall apart in the moment. 
but low key, you guys are kind of part of the the turnaround. Do y'all mm -hmm. talk about that? No, we don't talk about it. We just we always joke about it. Like, remember when we came over <laughs> here our senior year? Um, and came up here in November on our own visit, ran our own visit through our campus, and just talk about that. And then we always talk about like the game, like how they was getting <laughs> some <back. laughs> Hey man, look, look, uh, as much as, you know, the guys that, that stayed and grinded that were on that team and they had big roles in, in, in the turnaround, I think the tone that you guys said staying in the class, at least for the fan base, is one of the few positives from that season was that the recruiting class stayed together. So, and picked up Donovan after the fact. So that was, that was really, really big. You come in, let's fast forward. You come into Michigan and man, it's hard for a freshman to get on the field right away, but you do it, man. I mean, when did, <laughs> when did you realize in that? And maybe it was in camp, maybe it was the first week of practice. There had to be some moment in that part of your journey where you kind of realize, okay, Man, I'm I'm kind of standing out here too. Um, well, yeah, I came in. I believe it was like June first, and we had the workouts. And I'm coming from high school. I'm thinking I'm big, like strong, and I'm doing these workouts. I'm like, oh yeah, no, nah, I got a long, <laughs> I got a long way to go. And then we go through the summer workouts and get to camp. And um, like me, when I first got here, I knew because from high school, my coach always told me like you have to know what you're doing on the field. So basically, the playbook. We never had our iPads like throughout the summer, but I would like continuously ask for like the install sheets. Like they would give me packets because mm -hmm. I kept asking for it. And I finally like I would just study the the plays. And like at first it was a little rocky during camp, but then there was like I want to say in the middle of camp I had got a, a I just oh we were going live and I was going freshman on freshman. And I was just kept hitting and hitting people because like I don't I like I like tackling and. um Everybody, all the older older heads kept telling me like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be good, you're gonna be good. And that's when I knew, and I kept making plays and camp. I would pick up, me and, me and McBurrows kept picking the ball off over and over again. And um, and then it went from that and I was, uh, I got moved to nickel. Like I was a safety and then I got moved to nickel. And I believe that was the, that's what really made me the player who I am, that I am today because when you go down to nickel, it's kind of the same as safety, but you learn the defense from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And then you go behind the nickel, and then you know like what everyone's doing, mm -hmm. essentially. And so I was so mad when I got moved to nickel. <laughs> I was so mad. Because I was like, well, I don't know how to play nickel. I'm like, I'm a safety, you know, you know how that goes. And so um, we go to the first game, and, and we blow Western, Western Michigan out, and I get in the dirty minutes. And I'm like, I mean, I'm not mad. I'm like, I got in. Like, right. I played. And then we go to Washington week two, boy, and <laughs> we come in on Monday. He throws a package on the on the board, and I'm starting in the package like <laughs> I'm like, yo, I'm starting. And it's, it was called rabbits. Every time we walk around, the, I would walk around the facility. Somebody's calling me. They're like, yo, rabbits. <laughs> it's like I, that was me like starting in that package. So then um, we go through the week and we play Washington, and. Uh, I believe it was like a third it's in the second quarter so it's not even at the end of the game it's like in the heat of the game and that was my first like real college atmosphere night game mm -hmm. in prime time against washington and, we, and i go in there <laughs> i'm in there like oh god i'm out here and i'm trying to talk to dax and i can't even hear myself talking and i'm like oh, forget it i'm gonna just play the man on the dude that that was that play brad got that fumble i'm getting blocked all the way <laughs> all the way out the screen i'm like okay yeah but it was just cool being able to get on the field and then towards the end of the game like i just kept playing and i got my first pass deflection but yeah i don't like that game though i, got I know you don't <laughs> and so, that, and so I, look man not to pick it a scab or break up bad memories but i remember breaking down that game with with vance beffert my guy a long time defensive coordinator db coach and he was talking about the touchdown i want you to talk me through it from your perspective what you were thinking in the moment and then what you learned from it because he what he said was this is just a young guy you know his his first time being in the fire with experience this kind of thing kind of mistake that he's not gonna make so he cut you some slack that he doesn't normally cut <laughs> dudes but what do you remember about it i remember going the same package it's, it's i think that's the second quarter it was the second quarter mm -hmm. and i go in there and i'm and, and we're running the cover zero blitz 
I'm thinking I'm busting, but then like it was adjusted. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm not busting no more. And I knew it was cover zero, and I'm like, I don't know what told me, but right as the ball was snapped, I'm like, the ball's coming to my man, like, cause I was just thinking like I'm the freshman out there, and they see his man coverage, they're gonna they're gonna attack me. So mm -hmm. the way he released, like it was a, a, a out and around outside of one, cause it was a bunch. And I missed him. Like I tried to jump, missed him. I'm like, oh yeah, it's really coming to me now. So I just ran. I'm chasing him, chasing him, chasing him. I'm just trying to wait to play the ball. And the ball came and I shot my hand a second late. And, it, and my hand went through, but he still caught it. And he fell. And I'm like, I just got scored on national television. Mm -hmm. And I get up and I'm in the back of the end zone. And I'm just looking at the, <laughs> the defense looking at me. And I'm like, I felt like I let the team, like the defense down. Like I was so, I was out of it. Like soon as we went to the sideline. People trying to tell me, I was like, nah, I was like, stop talking to me. I was just not, I was out of it because it was like, I felt like I may have ruined the opportunity that I had because it's like, I got scored on. It was, I don't even think they had any points on the board. And I was like, dang. But then I learned from it. And so what was your takeaway? Like if you line that, lined up in that same situation now, how do you play it? Um, Either be more aggressive at the point because he was a point and that's what i've learned like you have to be if the point if your man's on a point you have to be aggressive because mm. it's like it, it disrupts every other route either be more aggressive or get over top quicker and get like get into my man's head because and realistically i kept i'll probably watch that play i would say 50 to 100 times mm -hmm. over and over again. I was talking to your brother about it. He was like, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept saying, like, that night, yeah. I didn't even talk to nobody. I was just like, bro, I just got scored on. But if I could, I think I really, if I would have worked to the hip and lean and located fast, I probably would have picked the ball. I could have picked the ball off because it wasn't even like a, a over the show throw. It was like he caught it like this. Mm -hmm. So if I would have just turned, I could have just picked it off. So you, you mentioned how many times you watched that play. The other thing I know about you, you were a film chunky was that something you developed coming here or did you have that did you have that before you got to michigan i would probably um give all that credit to my father because um growing up he always had my mom like my peewee games my middle school games and then even high school like i had film from high school like on the ipad but throughout those years he always had my mom recording the games and if my mom wasn't there he had someone do it mm -hmm. So we could like we would always watch the game, come home and watch the game. He was my coach, but we would always come home and watch the game the same day. Mm -hmm. And then just going into high school and ha already having that, and then hearing my high school coaches always telling me like you got to watch film to look at, and I would just continuously watch it over and over again to like critique myself and then see what like I could do to be able to stop the play. Mm -hmm. And then when I got here, it was just already there, so. Like, I just kept asking for the playbook, and then when I finally got my iPad in camp, um, I kept every practice, like, I would write down in the meetings when I had a mistake, I would write down the play number and, like, what I did wrong. And then that whole that whole night after after camp practice, I would just be watching practice over and over again and watch my corrections. And I remember Andrew was my roommate. <laughs> I used to be laying in the bed all the time watching. I wouldn't even leave the room after practice. I would just be in the, in the bed watching my film. Andrew would be like, you always, why are you always watching film? <laughs> I was like, bro, I said, I'm trying to play. Like, right, I'm, I'm trying, trying to play. play. That's why. <laughs> but, and then I kind of got field. him to do it. Like, he started learning to watch film more. And we started watching together because he's a receiver. And then we would watch one on ones together. And it, would just, it went up from there. And, like, I still do that today. Even, like, in the spring when I don't play, like, when I didn't play, I still watch everybody else. Mm -hmm. and still be able to like in meetings if coach asked me or he would call me out ask me i'll be able to correct it or help the young guys because it's like uh what am i how is that not why, why would i be there and not help and try to better the team because if i go down who who's going to be there to be able to do that and mm -hmm. and bring the team up yeah no doubt so look now you're playing like everyone gets beat right so you didn't come out the lineup you're still playing you got a little profile now and you got a little profile at a time where you can monetize that, where you can you can get paid mm -hmm. for your profile, you can get paid for your name, image, likeness. So, your experience with NIL, what is it? What was it like then? What has it been like so far? You know, and, and kind of compare it if you can to the experience that you've heard from guys that 
don't uh, aren't at Michigan anymore. Like Andrell, for instance, mm-hmm. is at Oklahoma now. I mean, what's it like for him down there? Right. Um. Who is it? That's a deep topic. It's different for everybody because, you know, different positions get paid because, like, they're the different positions. Like, the yeah. quarterback gets all, like, a lot of the money. The old line gets a lot of money. The running backs. And on the other side, it's very – and receivers. But on the other side, it's very hard for DBs unless you're, like, continuously making plays to mm. get paid. And um, me personally, um, this past year – like right now, it's probably been the best, um, like that I've been with an IO deals. Mm-hmm. Like being able to reach out to people and have people reach out on me, my behalf and 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 negotiate deals for me. This is probably the best it's been. But like the past year, like after last year, I would see like you know people in my class like JJ Donovan and um and um Junior Andrew, like getting an IO deals, and I would just like. I would still get some deals, but it's just it was harder for me because mm-hmm. like I started playing later and it was harder for me to get my name out there. But comparing it to other schools, like I mean, you see Bryce Young when he got his, like I'm like, whoa, <laughs> getting like a million dollars in in college, and it's just like it was just like why like to me NIL could have could get out of control, but it's just like they crossed the rules, like they made the rules, so like. I don't even know where you could go from there. You mentioned how you got quarterbacks, offensive guys making X, Y, Z, like you know. Is, is that something that coaches have to kind of manage your expectations for? Or do you just have that understanding? Like it feels like in an NFL locker room, guys just know that's how it goes. Did you guys as players, especially with NIL being new, did you just know or did the coaches kind of have to address it with you guys? Um, I don't even think it was a coach. I be, it, I think it was just we knew when you see like other schools and the positions at other schools and what positions are really, you know, thriving off of NIO. Mm-hmm. And it was more so like the offensive side. Um, yeah, like the quarterbacks of other schools, running backs, receivers of other schools, you could tell like there was a lot of other deals. There was a lot of deals that could be coming their way. And it was just – it's just different. I really didn't. I really didn't care about nil. Mm-hmm. Like it really wasn't even a priority when when it started coming out because I didn't understand it and I didn't want to stress about it and be all like you know perked up about it. But mm-hmm. it came and it's, now I kind of understand a little bit. Right. So I know that you have kind of connected with Morgan Stanley when it comes to what to do with that money that you that you get. So what have been your takeaways from from that experience about whether it's managing money or tax planning, like what have been your biggest takeaways so far as that's concerned? Um, a lot of the takeaways I've had, well, the main one is to learn to put some of the money up that you earn off of NIO and and save it because like I've already opened up a um, Roth IRA with them and mm-hmm. and that's, I know just like learning, learning about what that is, like it could benefit me in the long run, especially with retirement. It's just like you just got to put a certain amount up. Like, don't always spend the earnings that you get, especially on dumb stuff like <laughs> like clothing, right. you know, things like that. Like me, that's not. I've already always been that type of guy. Like, I I would never. I'm not gonna say I would never, but I've never been the type of person to spend my money on like the designer stuff. Like, I don't uh-huh. care for that. Like, I'm a I'm gonna dress how I dress at the end of the day, but. It's really taught me just to know how to budget my money and save it, and and how to and what to spend on and what not to spend on. Mm-hmm. All right, so definitely gonna be able to start getting your nest egg together now. But it's a whole lot more football for you to go, and a lot more football to talk about getting back on the field. Let's fast forward to the end of the season, and you're playing Ohio State, man. <laughs> right. So once you get to Michigan, and one of the knocks is. Ohio State did not. I'm talking about from Ohio folks. Like you are an Ohio guy at Michigan, and they're quick to say, "Oh, Ohio State didn't offer you." Mm-hmm. How does that hit you? Do you do you pay attention to that? Does it put a chip on your shoulder? Does it make it more personal? How does that hit you I as an put Ohio a guy? Chip on my shoulder for sure. As soon as I came here, I would tell everyone because a lot of people in my school, I think probably majority of people in my school were Ohio State fans, and every time I like they seen I was going to Michigan, they're like, "You going to Michigan?" I'm like. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, okay, but when we when I get to Michigan, I promise you, like, either if I'm there three or four years, we would not lose to Ohio State. 
And I, I, I was so serious when I said that. I just wasn't saying that. I would say that with the straightest face <laughs> ever. And um, it took, it just came to the point where when I got here, it was okay. It's already a chip on my shoulder. We haven't beat them in what it was, I think, 10, 11 years. Something, it was something ridiculous. Yeah, and I was 20, like. 2011? Yeah, 2011, 2011 I yeah. think that's what it was. And uh, yeah, like when we got to that game, well, first, when I first got here, like I knew it was a rivalry. But then it's like, no red in the facility. <laughs> There's no red cars in the parking lot. And it's like, oh, it's like that. Like, <laughs> they near like bloods and crips. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, they for real, they, okay. And I'm, I like that, like, cause it, you know that when that week comes, like, I tell you, my freshman year, uh, we always mention that week in, in our special teams meeting. And then when that, meet, that, that week comes, you can tell like, it's really like nothing else matters but the game. Mm -hmm. Like it's everything is on the line, cause um, you know it's to go to the championship or to even go to the playoffs. And the way we prepare for that game is just the um, like we have the beat Ohio drill, and we do that all year. And then when it's beat Ohio, like the actual week, I think that's probably the hardest that drill ever is ran. And, and the way we compete in practice is like okay, like we got to be the best at our best that week. And then, like, the game comes, and it's like, okay, it's time to roll. So you jump on the field, and I just remember an exchange with you and Jackson Smith and Jigba. And so I, I just wonder, what, what was being said? What led up to that? What was being said? Take me into that moment. <laughs> uh, it was more so, like, the the atmosphere of the game had me, got me going. And, I'm, and I, I told people, like, I told my teammates, I'm like, if they try to excessively block me, like, I'm going to do something, like, probably with my arm, lock a long arm or something to get him mad and try to get him to do something. And that's what I did. Like, he was he was trying to uh, little boy me, and I wasn't going for that. And and so I did that. Like, my hand was probably up in his neck. And as soon as I did that, I held it for, like, a couple seconds, and he smacked my arm down, and I seen him coming at me. So then I, we both headbutt, like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> and we headbutted each other. I'm saying what I'm saying. I really can't even understand what he's saying, but, you know, I'm going, like, I'm talking my talk. And so he clapped, he started clapping in my face. When I tell you, it took everything in me not to swing, because it's like, you, I'm a, you clapping in my face, what, what are you doing? And I almost swung on him, but then I heard the whistle, and I was like, okay, no, I'm in a football game, I gotta, I gotta chill. <laughs> I, so I was gonna ask you, man, because you a super laid back dude. You know, I see, and I've seen you smile and laugh, but Rod Smith mad. <laughs> like I, I I don't know I was asking your brother about I mean what's the the mad Rod Smith I mean Rod Rod more like and so man that was was that the moment where where the dog was about to come out yeah it's been a lot of on the field there's been a lot of moments where like if somebody hit me too hard it's like something just flips and I'm like okay yeah it's over and it, I'm I'm going to that I'm going there now so man there was one point in the game. Right, I mean, we know it's it's real chippy out there, but weren't you you were the one who got head butted, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. what, take me into that part of it. Uh, I don't know if you remember when it was like near our sideline when us and Ohio State were getting into that little scuffle. And '88, he was over there just talking, and I'm saying I'm saying something to him, but we just going back and forth. So there was just one play like the ball was going left and right all the way across the field, and I'm tasting it. And he's like just holding me and holding me, trying to block me. And we get over there and it ends up getting to the sideline. And like he, as soon as the play was over, he excessively like pushed me all the way to the, they near to the, um, like the railing of the, of the field. And I turn around, I'm like, yo, it's a flag. And then I just see him come and go, boom. <laughs> so I was like, Phew. like I just, I kind of flopped a little bit. And then I didn't even do nothing. I'm just like, I looked at the ref, I was like, bro, throw that. I was like, just throw the flag, throw the flag. He threw the flag. <laughs> see, and now from the outside looking in, when I saw that, I was like, I oh, mean, they're done. They, that's that's the game. They are completely out of the game, and so as but you're playing. I, did you have that? Like, how did you see that when that happened? I honestly didn't even know what down it was because I was so mad after he did that, and I was like, throw the flag, and, I, and Susie threw the flag. I was like, dummy, <laughs> and and, I'm, and I looked at how far they went back. I was like, oh, he folded. We was all on the field like oh, he folded. Like it's over now. It's like third and sixteen. All right, so so but. There's already a chip on your shoulder about that, about Ohio State, right? The game is you haven't beat them in forever. And you have some knowledge of that rivalry coming in. Compare that to Michigan State. 
Like, did you, the, the first year, did you play in, Michigan, in the Michigan State game in 21? No. Nope. So you, you just played in the one this past year in 22. Is it different? Like, if, if, it's, if it's different, what's different about it? If it's the same, what's the, what makes it the same? Uh, the difference is, there's, there's a couple of differences. It's like, Ohio State is like, I don't know how to explain it. It's more so of a serious, everything on the line, like top of the line game, rivalry. But there's dirty, don't get me wrong, there's like dirtiness in that game. But I say when it comes to Michigan State, like, it's like real hard hitting nose to nose football, dirty football. Like, there's a lot of, um, a lot of contact in that game, a lot of chippiness, a lot of talking. It gets, it got chippy. Like, this past year, um, when I played, like, well, I say my freshman year when I didn't play, just watching it and seeing, like, how they was talking and getting up. Cause, you know, the Michigan State sideline is small. Like, our bench is right here, and then the fans is, like, right where the, right, mm -hmm. right there. So you hearing the fans <laughs> in your ear, then you see how the players are going, 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 and it's just, it's different because I, it's probably, I think it's different because it's in state robbery, mm -hmm. and it's like, it's really who gets the bragging rights of the state, like who won the state, really. This year when I played in the game, it was just a lot of talking, a lot of chippiness, because I'm playing in it, so I'm really feeling it this time. And there was this one play, um, tight end, it, it was a third down, a tight end ran an out route, and I made that, he caught it on the first down, like they would've got the first down and everything. And I tackled him, but I had my hand like into the ball, so I ripped it, like we were on the ground, play over, like, yeah, it was my fault, but. <laughs> 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 Take your responsibility, okay? <laughs> but All right. like, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just rip the ball out of my hand right here. So I ripped the ball out. He turned like, laying like this, and just punched the side of my helmet like hard, and I and I fell backwards. I was like, oh no! <laughs> <And> I, <laughs> that Ohio State Rob yeah. Moore was coming out again. I'm like, nah, he just punched me. So I'm getting up, getting, trying to get up, and like my back is facing our sideline. I hear Coach Clean, Coach Harbaugh. Yo, I think Coach Harbaugh came and grabbed me because he, you know, Coach Harbaugh. He, he's vouching for me to the ref, but while wow, trying to grab me, pull me back. Because he's seen me, like, I got up and I was like, nah, it's the end of the game. I don't even care no more. Like, I, I'm already fighting. Because like, he punched me. And I'm like, okay. Nah, he got that. And then they, the ball went back. And then literally the next play, I got the interception. So I was chat like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going there as soon as I got it. So, like, um, yeah, that's the like, first time I've probably been punched in a football game by somebody. It was against Michigan State. So you said it's, it's rivalry, just like Ohio State, but you think it's, I want to understand, you think it's chippier or dirtier, or how would you describe it? Chippier and dirtier, for sure. Like, yeah, chippier and dirtier. Chippier like, you can't and be at dirtier. The bottom. I believe you can't be at the bottom of the Apollo against Michigan State. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> Like, Don't yeah, be the at refs, the bottom of the pile. The refs watch Michigan State, but I mean, huh, how can I say this? I think Mich I think the refs are more lenient versus Michigan State than it is Ohio State, because it's like I know from the outside looking in, you would think Ohio State and Michigan would be the more should be or, uh -huh. or to like edit rivalry, but I don't know. It's hard to explain. I know. I I think you. Sums it up. Don't be at the bottom of the pile in the, yeah. Michigan, State, in the Michigan State game. Right. I think that that about sums it up. But you mentioned Coach Harbaugh grabs. You mentioned Coach Clink. I kind of jumped over this at the beginning. Clink recruited you at Kentucky, so you had a relationship with him already coming in the door, right? But I've talked to a few DBs now, and they say, "Man, you know, the, the recruit, the Clink, the recruiter, and Clink, the coach is kind of like, kind of like a switch <laughs> that flips. At least for them, is it the same for you?" I see why they say that, but I believe, like, he's still the same guy that he recruited me from, like, Kentucky to, the, like, him coaching me now. It's just, <laughs> when you're on that field, like, I think what the, what the young guys and stuff have to understand, like, that's his job and that's mm -hmm. the way he feeds his family at the end of the day. So, of course, he's going to be the way he is. And especially, <laughs> like, him being the type of, like, man he is, like, he yeah he, yeah. I mean, yeah, look, he not to yelled. say not to say that he sugarcoat when he recruiting like he is a what you see what you get guy. Yeah. But he you know he be on that like when we on when we on the field he be on that like it's been times bro my freshman year I think because I know like the young guy struggle with it now so I be talking to him because I went through it but like my freshman year it's been times where he had been in my face 
<laughs> I, in the on the middle in the middle of like practice on the field, and I'm just standing there like because you can't do nothing. But I'm just standing there, my fist balled up. And I can't do nothing, but I'm just like, bro. And I be mad for the rest of the practice because <laughs> it's like he be cutting up, like cutting up. It be like meetings, bro. Like it be so funny to me. It's because. After my freshman year, I got used to it because, like, that's how I was, I was growing up. My dad was always hard on me. My mom was already, always hard on me. And uh, so I easily adapted to it. But that spring when I didn't play with, with my shoulder, <laughs> I'm in meetings. I'll just watch him and listen to how he cut up on everybody. And it's like I got to put my head down sometimes <laughs> or, like, just put my, put my head because it's like it'd be so funny because <laughs> – so did, did any of the older guys help you help you with mm-hmm. it? Like, cause, cause I would be complaining. Like I'd be like, bro, he always on me. Like, but they would be like, you gotta understand, if the coach is not on you, it's a bad thing. But if he's on you, like, it's obviously because he sees that you're good and he wants you to be better. So it took me a long time to understand that. But like, Brad, especially like Brad and Dax, they knew how to handle that. And so just me talking to them and, and them being right there, they helped me to get through it a lot. All right. So, but Clink's an Ohio guy. Mm-hmm. You're an Ohio guy. You talked about, you know, the, the chip that there that exists for Ohio guys when you play Ohio State. But now y'all go to Ohio State this year. So was it was it different because of that for you? Like, what what was it like going back home essentially to play them this year? It was different because I remember, like, you know how they say they cover up all the M's, like with the Red X and in Columbus. So we're going out the airport on the bus, and I'm looking out the window, and the, it says that, that Columbus, I think John Glenn Airport, Columbus, on the end of the Columbus is a red X. So I was like, oh, yeah, okay, we're here now. Like, this is how it is. So uh, I don't, I've never – I've been to the stadium once. I've been to the game one time before that. So, mm. And it was, like, years back. So there's been changes to the stadium and everything. And so I didn't know, like, when we come out, like, we walking down the tunnel – but there's fans like right there, right here. We get there like the it's the night before the game though, and it's like okay, we're in, we're in Columbus. Like it's time to go tomorrow morning. And it kind of didn't even feel like it was a game until the next morning. Like I'm seeing all the tailgates and people flipping our bus off when we on the way to the stadium. <laughs> I think some people people even threw stuff at our bus, but that's happened in Michigan State when we went there. They threw a lot of there was people throwing stuff at our bus, but um, we get off the bus and go in or whatever. And then it was kind of it was most definitely different because you're not at home and and like walking out, going on to the field like for warm ups and everything. It was just always booze, booze, booze. It was kind of different than going to a ways games because it's like Ohio State. I, I remember coming up the uh, the tunnel for like right, right before the game, and there was the seniors' parents right there lined up, and it was this dude, this 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 dude that was looking at me. He was like. I think he said something. I oh, I had yo. It's gonna be a sad, a, da- a bad, senior, a sad senior day for y'all parents. <laughs> and he was like, "What'd you say?" I was like, "You heard me," and I just kept walking. <laughs> and so then we go back on the field. Who and that's knew Rob we, Moore talk like that? I, who knew you talk trash like that? Uh, but you gotta love was, it. If I was mic'd up, y'all would be laughing the whole like I, because I'd be talking. But we go out there. And I didn't know how the fans were set up. Like, I thought we would have been put in nosebleed or something like that. But you go, you run out, and I'm looking at the fans, and there's just one section of blue, yellow, and white. And I'm like, that's all we got in here? Like, it's just straight red everywhere else. It's red. And then um, they came out. I ain't going to lie. They came out firing. Like, they went down and scored, and I'm jogging off the side. And I'm like, oh, okay, they came to play. Like, we got to mm-hmm. tighten up. And so then it was halftime, and they were with us. And I'm just in the locker room. Like, nobody was really panicking. We, I think we knew we were going to beat them. But because, like, every time we come out of halftime, it's just mm-hmm. boom. As soon as it came out of halftime, and that's what it was. Did y'all change much at halftime defensively? From what you remember, not to get specific, but do you remember there being many adjustments? I don't think it was a lot. It was probably just a little bit of maybe fronts or something like mm-hmm. that. But we didn't really change much on the back end because the game plan we had was kind of working. It was just other receivers that were, like, stepping up, and we had to, okay, like, it's time for them to stop doing that. Mm-hmm. But they still they still played the game. Like, I believe they had maybe 300 passing yards. But, like, after that, when we started tearing it up and the offense started scoring and stuff, that's when I knew, like, 
it was over. The crowd was silent. It was you could hear you could hear me like if he was at the top, and at the end of the game, if I screamed, you probably could hear me because it was so quiet. <laughs> it was so quiet in there. But that's I mean, did you think in that moment? I'm probably projecting a little bit, but I'm just wondering if I were you. I'd be thinking, yeah, y'all ain't offering me. Remember? I mean, did, did any of that come across? I mean, yeah, y'all didn't offer me. Remember that? Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily that. It's just like you had a guy in your own backyard that you didn't even want to look towards and look what I'm doing to y'all. Like, mm -hmm. like not even to talk, but it's just like every time we play y'all, you already know I'm going to come with everything I got. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it definitely got bragging rights two years in a row, springboard into – the Big Ten Championship game, of course. You win that, you go to the playoff game. Your perspective, man, I mean, I've asked every guy about it. I'm, I'm less interested in what you think happened in the game and more interested in how that has shaped the offseason from an individual perspective and then the collective perspective. Because I can see in, in the past, like what the Michigan State game did, did to guys after the season, what Ohio State, what did that game do, in your opinion, if anything? To, to kind of shape how things are going for you guys this offseason. As far as TCU, the TCU TCU one? game. Ooh, that was a, we hit that one we took. That was hard for me to take because, like, I knew we were supposed to beat them. Mm -hmm. And, um, like, I, like, we played a very good game, like, coming back from the deficit we had. And uh, just going in that locker room, like, you knew everybody in the locker room knew we should have won that game. Like, there was, like, I don't think you've seen a happy face in the locker room because right, it was just course. like, Dang, like we just blew like blew something that should not have been blown. And um like going into the off season after that, like I that game probably hurt me for like two or three weeks. Like I would just be sitting there like, dang, we really lost that? Like, why did we lose that game? And after that, like coming into spring ball, like again, I didn't do spring ball again this year. But um like from looking at it to outside from the outside in, all the leaders and the top guys on the team are making this team like have the mindset of we not in this this 20 2023 2024 season without a national championship cuz it's like we it's two times in a row we've blown it in the first like first round of the playoffs mm -hmm. and we keep getting there so it's something that we have to change and do and practice different and just attack things completely differently to be able to get there and and get to the national championship and win it you know, I, it's interesting. I had a conversation with Will about this, and he said it wasn't that we didn't prepare hard. He said, I, I, I wonder if we were maybe a little too tight in practice. He was like, man, not to say that, you know, you know we should have we we worked uh, a little um, not as hard, but he was more of a long – y'all were looser in other games. Do mm -hmm. you have yeah, that Yeah, we were sense? looser. We are most definitely looser in other games. Um, I believe we did a lot of things in that game that we shouldn't have did or that we usually don't do because of the stage and the opportunity we knew we had mm -hmm. and we kind of just kind of maybe did too much and like Will probably like you said Will said was kind of too tight when we got on the field but yeah that one that one still makes me mad to this day like I'll watch I'll be watching that one over and over again because I will watch the TV copies mm -hmm. I'm just like because they came out, and you know when Donovan got that first yeah. run, I'm on the sideline, because I'm standing up. I'm on the sideline, oh, it's over. We won this, it's over, it's over. Then we, they stopped us, and I was like, okay. Then they went down and scored, and I'm like, we got to tighten up. And then it just went from there, yeah. and it was like, oh. And yeah. we came, like, when we came back, I was surprised. Cause I, like, that's when I knew our team, because it's like, the team that we had last year really didn't lose a lot. So that offense and the defense, that how we came together to be able to come back from the deficit that we had, I just know like that team could have went to the national championship and could have been a national champion, but it was just like now what do we do and how can we be get there now and what can we make better about this team? You know, part of that is the guys who are main characters in, in the play, so to speak, stepping their games up, and then you got to have some guys rise up like you did this past year. Mm -hmm. So you got a chance to watch practice from a different perspective because, mm -hmm. you, you know, you, didn't, you weren't in spring bars. You look back on it without saying everybody. Who, 
did you, who were some guys that really flashed to you? It was like, man, that dude looks like he's ready to, to kind of step up to the next level. The back end, um, I don't know if you, you've seen him, but uh, Quinn Johnson, like he, how he started getting burned at the end of the season, like Q has gone completely better. Like he should be one of the, he should be in the rotation this year. Like he mm. should be one of the guys that steps up this year. Um, McBurrow, Jaden McBurrow, like he's finally got his chance. Like, bro, when I tell you McBurrow is a, like a real football player, athlete, like he, he's going to make plays. Like Jaden is going to be that guy that steps up this year. You know, quick story, I went to watch him in high school. So he, um, he was matched up against Brandon Ennis, who was going to Ohio State, like five-star receiver. And that's when I learned who Jay McBurrow's was as a hitter. Oh, yeah, Jay Mack. Because when, man, when, when, when I say he decleated this, man, I, like if you, you go on Twitter, <laughs> it's on Twitter. You don't even have to turn the volume up past one. You will hear it. How, and it was like, ooh, you can hear it from the crowd, right? That is one of the things that I've heard from a lot of guys as, as hitters go. And it's crazy to hear, hear him say it because, you know, we haven't seen him on the field a lot. But it seemed like he has a reputation on the squad as one of the biggest hitters y'all have. Yeah, that camp, that first year camp, but he was thumping. Like, he was thumping. And, like, we was roommates, like, our whole freshman year. So that's my dog. Like, me and J-Mac, super close. And I remember we played, um, I think it was um, Washington. I mean, not Washington. Wisconsin, my freshman year. The tight end had caught a corner route. Bruh, he hit him so hard. I think dude broke his, he might have broke his rib. I think he broke his rib and his helmet came off. <laughs> and we was all, oh, yeah, J-Mac be here. <laughs> J-Mac be here. So I'm not going to, I hate to compare it to Ohio State dude, but just from size to hit ratio, he reminded me a lot of, I don't know if you old enough to remember Antoine Winfield played for Ohio State. Played a long time in the league. I know my guy Ben Krasner remembers that dude, pound for pound, one of the biggest hitters I've ever seen. That's who he reminds me of as a hitter. The question is, the other part of the game, have you kind of seen progress there? Because I know in the spring game, he was one of the ones that kind of stood out to me in coverage. So mm -hmm, yeah. what have you seen from him in that regard? He's helped me. Like, J-Mac, when we first got here, um, he's always helped me with my man coverage because, like, that's what I struggle with. And like, it's my man coverage. And he has probably arguably the second – First, second, or third best man covers in the DB room. Really? Mm hmm it Like, behind Will and Mikey, like him. Him and um, Keyshawn Harris. That's another guy who's just set up Keyshawn Harris. And he gonna, Keyshawn going to be good. And uh, But, yeah. That's who – okay, so I hate to jump from, from Jaden real quick, but you sending me another thought. That's who some of the offensive guys were talking about. Like, you ask them, and they were like, Keyshawn Harris. I went, and so he really, he really flashed for y'all this year. Keyshawn was sitting on stuff this year. Like in, in, in um, spring, he was sitting on everything. I don't even remember him getting burnt or cooked or scored on, really caught on that much in the spring. And, like, he's taking a complete, like, jump from where he was, like, the past season and the season before from where, to where he is now. Like, he, you could tell he's like, okay, it's time for me to get on the field. He's tired of sitting. Okay. Like, he's, he's one of the other guys. And um, give me uh, your take on, on I mean, we know he's still learning, still growing, still got a lot to figure out in the position. But your early thoughts on Marion? Man, Marion is an athlete that you would like rarely come across. The way, like I remember, um, in uh, I think it was winter workouts, me and him, we always like he was in my group when we did our sprints, and so he was always lined up next to me, and I knew he was the fastest dude. Marion will always be like right here, and then the way he ran his six cone and all the other stuff, I'm like, okay, we gotta we gotta put this on the field, like, cause I knew he was coming to DB. We gotta flip this around, like he's learning, but once he gets it down, Marion gonna be something, cause it's like six four, six five at corner, and you can run like and move and change direction like you can move like. Mm -hmm. If he gets it down in the spring, uh, the, the summer and going through camp, he should be. I believe the back end shouldn't even get scored on. <laughs> like we rarely do do now, but it's like not even scored on, but like burnt deep, really. Right, uh, and I gotta pick your brain real quick. I'm I'm being selective now. I know they're learning, but the young DBs that were early, the early enrollees, just your early impressions of those guys. Cam and Jair, he, uh, Jair, he's he gotta play this year. Like even if it's on special teams as like a gunner, Jair like. He has one speed and it's 100%. Like, he, you, 
you don't see a, a young kid coming from high school just come in already ready to hit. Like, mm -hmm. he stood out to everybody. Everybody always, oh, yeah, young dude going to be good because he just always hitting something. He always hit. He always is there. And it's not like he knows the defense, but he, you can tell he knows football. Mm -hmm. And Cam as well. Like, Cam Calhoun, he should be very good as well when he, like, you know, both of them got to put on some weight. Like, I believe I probably looked like them when I came in. Yeah. But um, they got to put on some weight, and they're going to be good. Learn the playbook, learn, like, just – how college football, how college and everything works, and they should real be, they should be good. All right, so let's let's wrap this up talking about Rod Moore as a junior. Where do you think you're gonna be better, Rod? I mean, are you bigger, are you faster, are you just know know the game, but like, where, what's the next level for for Rod Moore? Um, most definitely bigger. Um, I ended to see I played last season around 180. I will always fluctuate between 183, 186. Now I'm 194, 195, like 195. I'm trying to play at 190 between 197 and 200, but um like I don't know if you can see, but I always try to hit so, mm -hmm. like, but it's like I wasn't strong enough and big enough to be able to you know make that force and make him go backwards. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm stronger now, and I believe like just the way I try to hit, I think it's gonna show up on film this year um, as well as like. I'm most definitely gonna be working on my man coverage and just everything like knowledge again, like knowledge of the game. Like I'm trying to learn so much more just off of like what the people who are in front of me are doing and why they're calling a certain defense or what could like expectations and um and and trying to predict what could be like the threats of what could be in front of me. Mm -hmm. And so like that's just how I'm, I'm trying to take my game to the next level and and be able to be that, like, you know, the best safety in the country. Like, I mean, I know I got the little PFF or whatever, but I want to be the safety that's, okay, at the top now. Like, mm -hmm. going to be, okay, yeah, that's Rob Moore. He that, he's a safety, like, top safety in the country. Like, I want to be the top safety off the board if I happen to come out this year. But that's that's not, like, that's not a forefront of my mind. But, yeah, that's really it. All right, and so I always like to end talking about your circle, man. I mean, because none, none of you guys get here without some support. I know your circle is tight. Your, your, your family circle been super supportive. Your parents, Bobby, what, what about them and, and their role in your success to this point? Um, like a big thing with me, I've always been around my family. Like, like my dad's side, all my cousins, they've always been there. And my, my mom, my dad really, and BJ. I call Bobby BJ, mm -hmm. but they've always been there. Like growing up, when I played football, my mom, my mom was always the person on the books, making making sure I got my homework done, the chores in the house, and all that. And my dad was sports, like mm -hmm. taking me to practice, track practice, basketball, football, and just being that guy that was always pushing me. Like I'll be complaining all the time, but like now I see why why he did that. Like he, would, I would get mad because like I would never have summers. Like when I was younger. All my friends like, why are you always doing football stuff and going somewhere? I used to be mad, but it's like, now that I'm here, I understand why they did that. And just, like, they always push me in and give me advice daily, like, just to never be complacent. Like, my dad, me, we always live by never be complacent, because if you get complacent, there's always somebody behind you that's coming to take your spot, whether it's in, in football or even in the business world or whatever you do in life. And so you just always got to be, have something that, like you want to go for and what pushes you. And then along with that, like my grandma and my, and my friend that passed like these past two years, like both of them, they make me do what I do every day. Mm -hmm. Like it just pushes me to go harder. Cause like when my grandma, my grandma passes last May, but she, she got to see me um, play in the, in the uh, Big Ten championship. That's cool. And I, and I, like that just really touched me because like she's had always been that grandma that was at every game, like at my games and just being able to visit me. And it was just, it was just great to be able to do that. But both of them and my family, and they just pushed me. Yeah, and my man. friends, like all my close friends at home. Yeah, your, your circle, man. Um, like you had a merch, your mom did your merch line, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Like she did the uh, Say No More hoodies. Uh -huh. oh, I mean, you gonna bring those back? I think I might, because they not out. Like we can, <laughs> we can keep making those. It's me and the jig bone on Say No More. Right. You could get you could get one with your number, my number on the back, or just plain. But nice hoodie, you gotta right. go get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom did her thing with those. But no, Rod, it's been a pleasure. Appreciate you spending time with us. You know, good luck this off season, getting ready for the season, and do your thing on the field, man. We're looking forward to it. Appreciate you. I'm a 
for sure give you a show this year. <laughs> All right, man. It's Rob Moore. Folks, if you like the episodes of Behind the Uniform, you can always catch them on our YouTube page. Of course, uh, like the channel, subscribe to it. If you want to see all the other things we do, the MichiganInsider.com is the place to be for football, basketball, recruiting, you name it. That's where you can find everything we do. And of course, if you listen to us on the podcast, you can like the podcast, subscribe to that channel as well. That's how you keep us going and keep us growing. We'll see you next time on the next edition of Behind the Uniform.